Hello. I'm having a bad day. I haven't slept at all. It's about uh, 5 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. This is usually when I'm getting up to work with the animals. And I just haven't slept. I made soap last night, which you'll see in a video that I upload today. Um, but the reason why I haven't slept is, I've been like this my whole life since I was a little kid. I have trouble sleeping when I'm thinking. You know, there are a lot of things on my mind. <clears throat> I have family in California. Um, now, these, these aren't people that I grew up with. I didn't even know they existed until I was 30 years old. Um, I was raised an only child. That's a story for another video, perhaps. Um, the family that adopted me, and I'll explain what the air quotes are for another time as well, but the family that raised me, they didn't actually adopt me, but the family that raised me um, weren't very good parents. My father was an abusive alcoholic. When I say abusive, I spent time in the hospital as a child. My mother had to have a complete hysterectomy because of a beating my father gave her when I was a little boy. I remember when she was in the hospital, I was so sad because I was stuck with him. And he said to me that if you really want to go see her, I can make sure you go see her. And I knew what he meant. Um, I was an abused child. Um, I had multiple people. My father went to jail when I was a kid, which was almost unheard of in the early in the late 60s. Um, one of my school teachers called, took me to the principal's office. I can tell you that whole story sometime, but my father got carried away by the police, finally, after time after time of my mother being told it's a family squabble, even though she had a black eye, bloody mouth, and I'm sitting cowling in the corner. It's a family squabble, and the police don't like to get involved in those. Yeah. So, it's funny, when my mother got older, um, I heard her advising other women that were in abusive relationships, giving advice that she certainly never took herself, and that was getting away from the abuser. When my father went to jail, my mother and I had, she didn't have any money, she had, he left her, the, his cars were towed away. Uh, the, a lot of terrible stuff happened during that time, but my mother was left with a broke down Corvair. This was in, I My father was hauled off to jail. And um, the day I came home from preschool, Oh, excuse me. It was a weird time. He'd beat me pretty severely the night before, and the teacher saw that. But my father always followed up a beating with an apology. Son, tomorrow I'll take you out, buy you a box kite, and we'll go fly it. Which is all I ever really wanted anyway. You know, even as a kid, I could have looked past all the beatings, the foul language, the multiple times he told me that I wasn't his real kid, that his real kids were with another thankless woman. All that I could have got past. I could have got past the fact that he would tell other kids in front of me that I was a 
a word I can't use on YouTube or won't use, but basically it's something that our current president said he grabbed women by. This is, I'm not trying to make this political. It's just the only way I knew to connect the word. Kitty cats, okay? Anyway, the reason I'm telling you this, I don't know. My mother and I had to move in with her sister. Her sister had three sons. One was my age, we were 10 months apart. A middle boy who was five years older than me, so he was 10 when I was five, and then a 19 year old. And the 19 year old was living at home. The 10 year old and the one that was my age, the other five year old, they had their own room. They shared a room. And John, my oldest cousin, had a room by himself, so that's where they put me. The first night I was there, it was just me. He was out partying with his friends, whatever. And when he came home, um, he hurt me. He, I don't mean at that time, he didn't sexually abuse me. He just, he was, I was asleep and he was popping me with rubber bands in the arm. I mean, that's what he was doing. That's how he woke me up was taking rubber bands and popping me in the arm. And I didn't quite understand it as a child. There's lots of things I didn't understand. Like, there were a few times when, after that, when he did sexually molest me. It was more, when he raped me. And I remember he would trap me in the bed. He would put his arm around me and keep me there. He'd tell me that he'd kill my mother if I told her. I believed it. It's funny what you'll believe at five. Or 55. Uh, I remember getting up out of the bed a few times and it being wet or slimy and I didn't understand it. I was a little kid, right? But what I remember, and I can still feel it to this day, was a sloshy feeling inside of disgust. I didn't even know what disgust was. It was just this, I heard Rosie O'Donnell once say, I believe in an interview talking about sexual sexual molestation, saying that it was a swampy feeling and I understood just what she meant. Because I felt like a swamp inside. And that was exactly what how I felt. Like just this awful mess. It wasn't until one day my mother was doing laundry and she said, Where are all your underwear? I wouldn't tell her. She said, Patty, that's her nickname for me when I was little, wear your underwear. I finally told her where they were, and I'd hidden them behind the hamper my aunt in my aunt's house. They had one of those built-in hampers in the bathroom. It was a bottom, it was a cabinet. And the cabinet had a door in it, basically, where you could, with a spring on it, and you could push the, the, your laundry in there to wash it. But well, there was some plumbing back behind it. There was like a, a wood panel, and that's where I was sticking my bloody underwear. I was washing them out in the bathroom at night. My mother found them. She looked at me, she didn't understand, she just kept asking me, what's wrong with you? How are you sick, you know, and I was petrified. I couldn't tell her. He would kill her. She was all I had. She took me to the doctor, uh, to a doctor, she thought, you know, I, I was a self-abuser as a child. <laughs> Imagine that, right? I was getting abused right and left, and plus I was doing it myself. I would stick rocks up my nose. 
absolutely. In my ear, I'd put sticks in my ear. I would do these things to myself. And so she assumed I'd stuck something in my rear, right, and hurt myself. And of course the doctor looked at me and again, this is the 19th right? And this doctor told my mother, now, I didn't find this out till years later exactly what he had said to her. But he basically told her in the most foul language that somebody was having sex with me. My mother, of course, knew I was sleeping with John, and we went back to my aunt's house. My mother told my aunt. My aunt called me a effing little liar that I was making all this up, that I was a compulsive liar, and that all the abuse I'd taken from my father made me think everybody was abusing me. And she threw my mother and me out. My mother had nowhere to go. Fortunately, my mother did know some people. She called and we went and stayed with some people for a little while. Luckily, this, luckily, this woman that she knew was getting a divorce, and so her house was open, and so she had a vacancy so we could go and stay with her. And that was some of the happiest time in my life because I was, wasn't abused there. They didn't have a lot of money, we didn't have a lot of money, but we were happy. She had a kid about my age and we'd play together outside and do things, and it was the one time, it was just for about in retrospect, it was just about three months we were there, but it was a very happy time. There was no one there to hurt me, and I was pretty impressed by that. That was pretty wonderful. I can't believe I'm talking, telling this, and it's just coming out. So my mother got a place, she, my father was in jail at this time, in prison actually. He was in prison for abuse of his wife, not of me, but of his wife. And well, there was some child abuse I think was part of it, but it was mostly because of what he'd done to my mother. And she, she didn't file charges. The, some neighbors did or something. I don't really know the full story, but apparently it was bad enough where they, believed it, where they listened in. I mean, took their advice. I'm sorry, I'm babbling. So during this time, um, my mother started dating. We, She got an apartment, actually, for she and I. First time I, first and one well, thing, the only time I lived in an apartment, but I, I was a kid, but I just remember, it's not the only time. There, but anyway, we lived in this apartment, and my, my mother started dating a policeman. I thought he was really nice. He was nice to my mom. He he didn't live with us or anything. He would just come over and visit, and I think he spent the night a few times, but as a kid, you don't pick up on that stuff or know exactly what it means. But, I, I'm sorry I keep playing with my hair. It's hanging in my face. I need to go get it cut, I know. One day, I guess I was around six-ish at this time. Um, I think I started first grade early. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think it was first grade. Anyway, I'd come home on a bus. I took a bus to school. Back then it was so safe. I never thought twice about it, nor did any parent, I don't think. And I need to turn on an overhead fan. I am burning up. Thank you. And I'm sorry about the backdrop. Uh, it's just what I had to put up on that back wall. Um, so anyway, I was kind of a latchkey kid. My mother was working two jobs at that time. She'd got a job managing a little store of some kind. I don't remember what it was. It was like a five and dime or something. And then she worked in an electronics plant making these little steel plates of some kind. I don't know. I remember she used to bring some of them home and show me, but I don't really remember what they were. They were these little corrugated metal plates about that big. And that's what she made. Uh, so I was a latchkey kid. 
I actually had my own key at six, seven years old. I was going home on my own, cooking my own food at a young age. Hi, I'm sorry that ended rather abruptly. The tape just stopped recording, but I'll pick it back up. Uh, I have the rest of the tape. It's just separate, and this was getting long anyway. So I'm going to end it here. I'm sorry if this bummed anyone out, but thank you so much. You guys are great. Talk to you soon. Goodbye.